everyone. Welcome, everybody. Let me introduce ourselves. My name is uh, Lakshmi Kant Sharma, and I'm here with Hitesh Panchal, my colleague. And we work for eBay uh, Global Platform and Infrastructure Group. Before we start uh, and you know start discussing our uh, presentation, I would like to talk about the the presentation that happened in the morning. Uh, the that was named as uh, seven habits of the highly efficient uh, Jenkins user. And when the presenter was presenting, you know, all these slides, I could totally correlate. And at one point in time, I felt I think I should probably not present anymore, <laughs> because whatever he was describing the better plugins, the better uses, the better uses patterns. And I think that's what our journey has been so far. We, we, we have learned from our mistakes, failures, better plugins, configurations, and came to a point where we are here to present how we are actually using Jenkins to make our life more easy, efficient, and agile. But we'll present anyway. <laughs> <So> <laughs> So um, Jenkins, uh, the first thing is uh, uh, eBay has been using Jenkins for many, many years. Uh, seven years for sure, because I've been using Jenkins, and previously that it was Hudson. Um, and and, and it, has, it has done a tremendous impact on our day-to-day -day life. Jenkins has enabled us to make or improve and you know, be more productive agile, efficient, and more importantly, well-informed in what we do, how we do, and when we do our builds, compilation, test, release, and you name it, all the aspects of software development lifecycle. And it's an amazing journey that we have had so far with Jenkins. And we are truly thankful to Kashuke, you know, thank you very much, create such a nice uh, open source uh, framework and to the entire Jenkins community that actually make uh, this uh, vibrant one of the biggest you know, open source community. Thank you very much. So today we would like to share with you our journey uh, with Jenkins and how it has improved our day-to-day -day working life. And you know the first thing why, why we are doing this, you know, and uh, when I got uh, the, when I got to know that there is a uh, the the uh, Jenkins con user conference happening this year, uh, and first thing I asked myself, hey, I think we take Jenkins for granted just like that, and and we 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 heavily use it in such a way that somebody says continuous integration, short is CI, and we just say hi, hey, yeah, you're talking about Jenkins, and I realized that I think we got to give it back to the society as well that how we use it. And above most, society may be able to, you know, help us further, uh, you know, make it more efficient, and maybe I think we can, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, can help other people to see how they are, how they, how they can use it uh, in uh, in other forms. So let's get started. Agenda. Today we'll talk about the some of the challenges we face in our day-to-day -day life, and what will ha what will happen if Jenkins is not in our lives? We'll, we'll, we'll go through that interesting journey as well. Guiding principles, every single day, whatever we do, we want to make sure we go from good to great. And how we can go there, How what are the principles based on which we should operate to actually make sure all our deliverables, artifacts, libraries, applications are top notch. We'll go through some of the Jenkins execution models that are in place today. Uh, we will not be able to cover all, but uh, we would like to share a couple of them that are really helping our, in our day-to-day -day life. And then we'll quickly go through the test analysis and uh, build phase and, and what, all, what kind of uh, plugins uh, Jenkins enabling us to use and make ourselves more productive, agile, and efficient. And finally, we'll wrap it up with the packaging deployment and uh, configuration, some, some of the plugins that we are working on internally, and we are going to open source shortly. Developer life cycle. So believe me when I say this was one of the difficult slides I had to come up with. Um, because you know, all these things, build test, integration test, security test, availability test, uh, packaging, deployment, everything is being taken care of by Jenkins. So I, I was in a fix, first of all, if I need to think about, hey, if I'm the developer, I'm joining a company, and I've been using Jenkins thoroughly, 
how will I perform if I remove Jenkins? You know, let's say go in the time machine, go to Kashike, remove you know, his brainwash, no more Jenkins. How will I perform? Let's take a look at it. All right, here I am. I fire up my uh, you know, favorite IDE, Eclipse, any other you know, uh, uh, IDE that you would like. Start coding. And the very first thing comes to my mind right there. Do I fork the existing code? Do I branch out? What do I do? Because these questions correlate to the further deep down problem. How my changes will be merged? How they will be tested? How they will ensure that something is not broken? Everything working as expected. How other kind of testing that is like security, availability, and other things will happen? I do not know. Well, you know, I'm a pretty intelligent person. You know, I, I figured it out. I, I went further. So now I'm ready with my changes. And time has come to merge it. And I'm clueless again. Hey, you know what? How do I build it? What build tools? Do I use Maven? Do I use Mercury? Do I use, uh, do I use uh, Ant? Do I use some custom build tools? Where are they? Do I run it on Windows, Linux, Unix? What about operating system? What about execution model, whether it's JDK 6, 7, 8? You name it. There are so many confusions. But again, as I mentioned, I, you know, I'm pretty intelligent. So somehow I figured it out, went further. Now comes uh, my changes are all good. When I start integrating that into a big picture in the system like setting, somebody started asking me, hey, you know what? We are running integration test cases. How do I get your library? What changes have you done? These things are actually breaking the code. Now guess what? I need to redo. I need to do a recode. Probably I was not intelligent enough after all. So when I do the recoding, and I need to go through the same life cycle all over again. How do I do my builds, fork, merge, package, integration test cases, and all? Let, let's just suppose I have fantastic connections across developers in my team, company, found it out, solved all the problems ready to put the library or the application or the code to the live site, to our end users. And right there sitting one guy asking me some magical words, security, availability, stability, reliability. And I'm just clueless, hey, wait a minute. I'm not sure what all these uh, terms are. What do you mean? What kind of test, kit, test systems you have? How do I run them? So you see, if I do not have some automation in place, if I do not have systems like Jenkins automating our all user flows, I'm pretty much clueless. And thank you very much for not helping me. You know, I just joined in a company and a team, and I'm pretty much less productive, less efficient, and very less, you know, um, uh, agile. All the changes have to go through the whole manual process again and again. Pretty, pretty interesting uh, uh, thought process when I was going through and figuring out if I do not have Jenkins, what will happen? So let's take a look at some other uh, challenges as well. So those are the, the challenges that a developer will face by himself. Let's talk about a developer community, right? Within, a, within an organization, within a company. Cross-functional, cross-geography team. So as I said, you know, we belong to platform group. And every platform, uh, you know, it's not new, uh, are you know, formed with two core parts. One, the core framework itself, and the capabilities which are built around it. Many, many capabilities, many teams involved. So when you do a release at any point in time, and if there are contributions coming from multiple teams which are not necessarily co-located alongside you, some of them are in the East Coast, Texas, Asia, all over the place, Europe. So how do we ensure that they all adhere to standards they are more productive, and they are agile when they are doing all the development. Productivity and agility, of course, big, big problem, right? We, when, we, when we hire developers, right, when we say, hey, you are a fantastic developer, come over here, work for us. And guess what? Not only development, you need to figure out all those things that we discussed. Well, you know, you are really not helping him to be more productive and agile. So this is another challenge. Open source model. So whenever we actually work in open source model, right, it, it, it's really helpful, easy to use, transparent, and more importantly, it is error, uh, you know, it, it makes us less error prone, right? 
So how do we ensure that all the developers, let's say there are thousands of developers working in uh, one single organization, are adhering to standards, are using open source tools, are using uh, open source libraries, build systems, execution models, and stuff like that. A big challenge, especially when it's a, it's a global community you are dealing with, right? Quality standards, of course, uh, no-brainer, right? Nobody would like to actually have a deliverable done with less quality than the previous one. We want to make sure every single check-in, every single commit, every single line of code actually go through rigorous testing and are high in quality standards. And the last but not least, early, often, and continuous integration. I mean, again, isn't it what like Agile uh, manifesto says? We need to continue developing, continue uh, doing early integration, often integration, and continuous feedback loop. Right. So let's let's look at you know if we want to really solve these challenges, whether it's a one single developer or there is a you know a set of developers, and if they are facing all these challenges, how we wanna ensure that actually we are uh, overcoming those challenges? There has to be some some there have to be some guiding principles that are driving us every single day to ensure we adhere to standards. And here they are, three C's, very important for us. Every single day we come to office, and this is what we remind ourselves. Continuous integration, continuous feedback, and continuous delivery. Continuous integration ensures that we find things early, that we, that we deliver code changes in chunks, not in like one big blob that is bound to fail, and it will be very difficult to figure out what exactly is going wrong with that. Now, these three Cs are not individual things. They are tied to each other. They supplement each other. So if you are doing continuous integration, you would have a chance to do a continuous feedback. Tell user that your changes are all good. Great, thank you very much. You improved the quality as well. Appreciate it. Or, buddy, something is wrong. Take a look back at your code. It broke some task cases, or it created more fine bugs, or integration test cases, or guess what? It is actually using a third party library which has been flagged for a common security vulnerability, right? Now, continuous delivery. So if you are following continuous integration, continuous feedback, continuous delivery is not even a you know, brainer point at that point in time. It's just happening. Somebody is checking in the code, it is happening, it is going through the continuous integration, continuous feedback loop going on, and finally delivering continuously. Now, these three Cs also enable us to do build, test, notify often. Again, very common Agile manifesto words. So overall, how Jenkins helps us, and we'll see in further slides, Jenkins enable us to achieve three Cs that, are, that enable us to get more efficient and agile in nature. So let's take a look at it, like, you know, what kind of execution models are in place in eBay today? So you are a developer, right? I'm a developer. I get into my cube. I start forking the code. I did some changes. I submitted a pull request. What should I do? Should I also worry about how it will be merged? Who will do the build? Who will take care of my unit? Of course, you know, I should have taken care of my unit test already. But just to make sure the pull request when it gets merged to the main changes, the unit tests are run again because there are more changes that would have probably come in. What about the integration test cases? What about the application test cases? What about the API test cases? What about the usability test cases? What about the accessibility test cases? Probably it's too much for somebody to do all these things on their own, on their own silos. So user, a developer do just that, develop, and commit their changes. That's what they are hired for. Rest should be taken care of by Jenkins or a similar automated uh, automation uh, system. By the way, I mean, I haven't encountered yet another system that beautifully make it more extensible, configurable, and you know, make life easy in all different aspects of build, deploy, test, release, and all sort of things. Again, thank you, Crush again, Jenkins community. All right, so uh, 
what happens is GitHub actually has good integration with Jenkins. Two ways. If a user is checking in the source code in a branch, the GitHub Jenkins uh, hook will kick in a CI job. Or if it is a pull request, there is a custom hook that we have developed that takes care of getting that pull request and kick start a CI job with information about that pull request. Moreover, right, that as we discussed in the, the morning session, that was a pretty informative session, we use pull request builder. You can actually offload your work of creating a pull request as well. Very easy, very neat Jenkins plugins. So a CI job, whenever I say CI, it, Gen, we, we have been using Jenkins up to that extent that whenever I, when, whenever I need to say Jenkins, I just happen to say CI somehow, my habit, I'm sorry. But you know, just consider whenever I'm saying CI continuous integration, I'm talking about Jenkins. It has become such a big habit of our, ours that you know, we just make it synonymous. All right, so uh, Jenkins job gets kicked in. What it does, it builds the, job, builds the source code along with the existing source code. It runs the unit test cases. And more importantly, it does quality analysis based on the static analysis tools. First feedback loop right there. Now what? Time to make sure that all other type of test cases are also executed, right? Security test cases, performance test cases, and ensure that you are not, you're, you're not falling behind in quality, you are not introducing more bugs and more issues than you are contributing. Yet another feedback loop. What it does? Same thing, run the test cases, further more test cases, different type of test cases, different profile of test cases, and give you back a feedback loop. Now what? So whether it's a platform, and hence creating a library, or changing a library, or changing a capability, enabling another feature that you would like to distribute to a wider audience, that is your application developers, or you are changing application code, you would want to test it out. Integration test cases actually help up to a certain extent, but our browsers are changing every single day. Java is script uh, changing every single day. There are so many security vulnerability, vulnerabilities are happening every single day. So many companies are victim of those, right? So what you would wanna also do is to ensure that you use that library or that code, package it in application and deploy it. Again, a Jenkins CI job in automation, kicked in in a job chain fashion. Not that somebody actually kicked in the first one and then uh, went ahead, analyzed the results, and then kicked on the second and the third and fourth, and so on. No. It's all automation, build pipeline, uh, uh, the plugin, and there are certain other plugins uh, that actually can trigger CI jobs. No rocket science uh, if we are all using Jenkins, which I'm pretty sure we are. So again, uh, it packages and deploys the application. Uh, we will cover uh, in a bit the deployment part, whether we want to deploy it onto a VM, or better yet, test locally. Use the programmatic APIs for the existing open source tools to spin a container right there, right from Jenkins, deploy your app, and test it out. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, in a bit. And finally, system test. So these system tests could be of any nature, API, UI, security, availability, reliability, all sort of test cases, right? And, and in the end, what happens is every single CI job ties back to the user or the right set of people. When the system test fail or integration test fail, you might also want to notify the product manager as well. Hey, something is wrong. When it's a build job that is failing, you probably would not want to uh, you know, embarrass the developer, all right? Things happen, right? We are humans. So let's fix it. So a right set of folks are contacted at editable email notification, and there are a couple of other plugins that make it so highly efficient to actually notify people. Let's take a look at it, other execution model. So, so far, the model that we discussed here is more like when a developer is actually doing things. Right? And then coming to, a, coming to a place where he could actually complete his changes. 
what happens when the developer would like to contribute their changes and publish it for the wider audience, for a wider application developer audience, and make it available to them. Okay, here is the user. So what do you want to do? There are certain set of things that a user can do. And again, this is a Jenkins UI, uh, if you're wondering. What all things can we do? We can test an application, we can release, we can validate, but more importantly, we can certify, and I'll, I'll cover that in a minute, we can certify multiple things, whether it's a library, an application, a system component, for example. Tomorrow, what if the Tomcat uh, container, let's say, uh, you know, uh, has been exposed to a security vulnerability and you would want to fix that, patch it up. How do we do that? Do we contact like 500 applications uh, in your company and you know, ask them, hey, can you run all your test cases and make sure everything goes good? No, I mean, in that case, you probably will be talking about like six months to a year time frame. You would want all those things to be automated. How about JDK 6, 7, 8? How about Maven versions? Whether you are going from Maven 2 to Maven 3, or you are going from 3.0 to 3.1 to 3.2. How do you ensure that uh, the new features of the Maven are also like not adversely impacting, right? For example, like Maven 3.2, uh, you know, it has been my wish list for a long time that in, in, in defining a parent, you can define the version ranges. So how do you ensure that your release plugin is not getting screwed up because of that? Right? So system level components you would want to certify. So it provides an interface to interact with and help you do all those things. How does it do it? Again, there is no rocket science in that as well. It's a Jenkins-based execution model. Every single box that I show here is a Jenkins, either Jenkins VM or a CI job, Jenkins uh, CI job within a single VM or multiple VMs as such. Certification aggregator job. What it does, it defines two things. What, I, what, a, what the input user should provide. If it is a library, if it is a Maven-based build, what do we want? We want the group ID, artifact ID, and version. Maybe Git repo, max, done. If it is the container certification, you would want to know what the container and what the version. If it is operating system, Ubuntu 12.04, 14.04, what version you want to certify. And summarize the information and pass it on to other set of CI jobs that will take care of the rest. Analyze the dependencies. While if you have 100,000 task cases and you know, uh, nobody's going to stop you to execute all of them, even if it takes like 10 days, 10 hours, five hours, depending upon the nature of task cases. But do you really want to execute all 10,000 task cases when you know that the changes that have come in are going to impact only 1,000 task cases? Probably not. So what you want to do is you want to you know, segment your test cases. You know, this is my web application related test cases. This is my service uh, application related test cases. Better yet, how about you know, uh, segmenting them based on their uses, code base uses, right? So this CI job takes care of doing that. Then validate uh, job. So at any point in time, you would want to make sure that all the contributions, all the changes, are adhering to certain standards. They are using right side of JDK, right side of container, right side of libraries. Like again, we talked about security issues, right? You know, uh, there might be some libraries which are having older versions, and you want to ensure that our live site is not running on those older versions of libraries. And hence, you do some sort of enforcement, rules enforcement right there. And finally, all this information goes back, goes, goes to the test harness. And this is the heart of the system, which tries to run all the test cases depending upon our, our, our choice sequentially, parallelly, and multiple runs in parallel as well. What it does, it executes multiple applications, multiple deployments, and multiple packaging all at the same time while talking to them. And again, you know, if you are well versed with the Jenkins, it's APIs, it's CLI support, which is fantastic. I think it's, it's not even a rocket science. It's, it's easy peasy, right? So it, it, it uh, package, deploy, run test, get the test cases, and do what? Pass it on to 
test analysis phase. So here is a very interesting thing. You, you, would, you do not want to actually fail a build after running 10,000 test cases that there are five test cases that actually are unstable, but guess what? Without even these changes, they were still unstable anyway. So the system runs existing test cases without any change on a continuous basis and compare the results for the change, whether the unstable test cases were also unstable previously or not. So right set of notification, right set of uh, test analysis. And uh, remaining is pretty easy uh, stuff like, you know, you, you, uh, once you are satisfied, you would want to make sure that actually you release it. And if there are certain issues, you would want to make sure that actually you uh, give the feedback loop again. And I, I think I'm gonna talk uh, again and again about feedback loop because it is very important to become more agile and efficient. You do not want to wait for the whole day when you submitted your bill in the morning to actually find out something is wrong and you need to fix it. And you do not like, you, you would not want to go home and actually start working on that again, right? Not a good idea. I don't like it. Okay, let's uh, quickly go through that uh, build analysis and test phase. Uh, some of these things will be repetitive, so I'll just quickly uh, breeze past them. Build, SEM, and functional task cases. Analysis, system test. So I'll cover them one by one in coming slides. All right, build. So Jenkins, Jenkins has got a fantastic integration with SCM systems, build systems, and its GitHub plugin is amazing. You know, I mean, you know, I know all, all you guys actually, you know, have used Jenkins, but you know, I have to say it's amazing. What it cannot do, all these plugins can help you create the pull request, do the build, do the multiple steps to check out from multiple Git repositories. After the build, after you have verified everything, you can analyze whether the, actually uh, the changes are bringing in the instability or it's all good. And then you can auto merge it as well or reject by all means, right? All in automation. Nobody need to do anything manual, right? So that's where I, when I say it's, it's amazing. Now, Auto merge and auto reject feature, uh, we have our custom plugin as well that actually help us analyze the results between without changes when you do a build and with changes that pull request change when you do a build. Are we degrading in quality or not? Are we improving the quality or not? Quality analysis, I think, is pretty standard. You know, I think pretty much everybody knows here. You know, no, no brainer here. Uh, you run test cases, Kovachara or Jekoko or Emma. You know, uh, use one of those tools, get the code coverage, and at the same time, you use you know, find bugs, PMD, check style, and and all sort of these uh, you know uh, tools that actually help you make sure that there are no static violations going in, whether it's uh, coding standards, or a deficiency in the code, or a security code. So how it really helps us, actually, in, in the end, all said and done, how it really helps us to actually become more productive and agile, right? First thing, user focuses on actual work, really. You know, if you're hiring a developer, don't ask him to do five different things. Ask him to do one thing, develop, right? And let Jenkins-based automation system take care of everything. Great integration with IDN, this is my favorite, right? Uh, what happens is if I'm developing something and I actually uh, submitted a pull request, I do not want to go to a browser, click on a tab, open the CI link, and then click on that view, I, view tab, and then actually click on the CI job and figure out if it is passing or failing. No, I mean, this is probably too much. Maybe just a minute job, but you know, I, from the steps perspective, I really hate it. So what happens? Fantastic integration with Eclipse. You know, you can actually have the Jenkins uh, jobs uh, uh, status right there in your Eclipse. I'm talking more about Eclipse because actually I use Eclipse a lot. Browsers, Chrome, you know, whether it's a dashboard plugin or monitor me plugin, these are pretty good plugins when it comes to actually not browsing out of your existing window and be able to see if everything goes good or bad. Even better, it is really helpful for a product manager to know all these details because then he can really actually appreciate uh, what people are doing and get you an appreciation, right? 
What happens? Jenkins ecosystem efficiently integrates with SEM build system tools, blah, blah, blah. We, I think we talked about it right in the end. What matters is how we are actually getting more productive and agile with automation, continuous integration, continuous feedback. So I'll not put too much of time. I think we have discussed about all these things. Uh, if it is fine bugs or PMD or check style or Kabulshara, you might want to make sure that you are not degrading. And one of the way to do that is actually using thresholds. You are not introducing a new bug and you are not having an existing bug as well. Fail the build and make it unstable. Looks easy, right? Code reviews. You want to make sure code reviews are happening. Otherwise, do not accept it. Update, use the Jira plugin. Update the information. Dependency analysis, we already talked about it. Notifications. So one, and I think let me just go to this slide. The notification is very important aspect. Being notifiable, being notified, or having an actionable notification, there is a, there is a vast difference on that. You can tell me, hey, your build has failed, you know, go over there and figure out what, what, whatever is going on, you know, you know, help yourself. Or you can send an email with more information, here's your CI job, here is the build status. It is unstable for such a long time. Here are the changes that have happened. Here are your changes. Here are number of test failures. Here is the console output snippet. That actually matters. Here is the compiled warning output, by the way, if you were looking for. Go figure out, right? So what do you do? If you get that email, you do not go to a CI job to figure out what exactly failed. You go right back to your Eclipse and start fixing things. Improves productivity and make us more efficient, right? And again, you know, um, all these Jenkins plugins, ecosystem, and dashboards make it so easy to take a well-informed decisions. Think about the life of a product manager when he doesn't need to go to like five different people, like, hey, dev manager, QA manager, this guy, that guy, did you complete your feature? Did you do that? No, I mean, things are already there. He can just clearly check it out on the dashboard. Jira's are getting updated automatically, right? So nice and neat. Integration test cases, again, you know, more test cases. Uh, you want to make sure we you actually run tons of test cases all sort of possible test cases before you actually put it to, to the life side. And again, you know, we'll not discuss more. You know, uh, there are so many great plugins like Sonar, and you, you are enabling your higher management. Your VP would not want to go to like 25 or 1,000 CI VMs and check it out like, hey, what's going on? How about you? How about you? Your team, your team. So Sonar and all these systems are pretty good. But guess what? It cannot function by itself. You don't want to put information and numbers by yourself like doing some script and all. Use Jenkins. You already executed a build. You already have the violations reported. You already have the code coverage. You already have the whole information. Just push it back to Sonar. So easy. And continuous inputs to the uh, jobs, auto release. You know, uh, I think uh, there's no point in talking more on those things again. And yeah, how uh, they, how it really helps. You are not running your test cases by yourself. Multiple types of test cases, different profile of test cases. Automation is the key. Reports, dashboards, and, and this is where is the key, right? Uh, being a developer or being you know, uh, somebody who actually likes the lower level stuff, we really hate dashboards, open secret. But our management is actually wanted, so do that. All right, so you, you, you want a dashboard. For sure, right? And you want to make sure that the information is very, very clear over there. Jenkins by default provides it. You don't need to do anything on that, right? Here's my manager sitting, laughing on me. <laughs> All right. Um, Jenkins plugins enable auto-triggered, automated flow of tests and release, blah, 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 we already know. And I think pretty much everybody, uh, every one of you know. So let me introduce you to Hitesh Panchal. He'll take care of it while I have my water. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope you are having a good time. Uh, packaging and deploying. So what is packaging? Packaging is essentially a restructuring of your code, which has passed through all the quality gates. You want to add a specific deployable metadata. You want to add configurations pertaining to your specific environment and make a deployable package. 
What does that mean? For your different environments, you will have different kind of package. For your QA environment, you can have different deployable package. For your production, you can have different. For your Unix-based system, you can have different deployable package. And it will go on. So uh, we want to bring efficiency over here. In your Jenkins job, if you have already done the build for your uh, integration tests, for your quality checks, uh, while packaging, why you want to do build again? So this was an opportunity for us to use a Jenkins feature that developer community loves the most. And that feature is pluggable interface. Develop your own custom plugin. We develop our custom plugin for the packaging, which can act on uh, your latest build, or it can be uh, used for any previously successful build. You select the build, you pass your configuration, metadata, and it will prepare a deployable package for specific environment. Uh, Mm. System tests essentially contains like functional and non-functional testing. In functional tests, usability is a king. Uh, apart from usability, you will have several things like accessibility. Your product should be accessible for every user. Uh, non-functional requirements are essential. What about security, performance? These are certain aspects which you can test where you need a separate deployable environment. Uh, can we bring efficiency over here? Uh, when we write the functional test, we have option to automate them. We can automate using, if you have web-based application, you can use Selenium scripts. You can use any other open source solutions. If you have mobile-based application, you can use Calabas or that sort of open source solution. However, important thing is you need an environment where you will deploy your code. Now consider a case like you are developing an application which can be run on multiple different type of environments. In that case, it can run on Tomcat, it can run on JBoss application server. For each different environment, you will end up provisioning separate VMs. Here we can bring an efficiency, bringing Arculean. Uh, have you used Arculean anyway for your integration tests? If not, I would recommend we should start using that. With Arculean using along with the Jenkins in our system test, we are not required to have separate virtual machine or environment to run our system test. Arculan provides an API through which we can control the embedded application servers. We can start, we can stop, we can deploy from our test itself. So that's how we bring efficiency over here. Functional code coverage is another aspect. Uh, uh, we need functional code coverage for mainly two purposes. One is, in your test case, you want to ensure that all the functionality has been tested and in an automation way. Secondly, um, you may come up with a requirement where you want to see how much of my code is actually being used by the user. In that case, we need a code coverage. Uh, we have uh, certain code coverage tools available like JCoco. JCoco plugins available in Jenkins. Is it efficient? Can we bring efficiency over here? Yes. So we developed an open source solution, which we are going to publish as Jenkins plugin soon, about functional code coverage. It is an end-to-end -end solution, where if business comes and tells me that for particular VM, I want functional code coverage report. It can be on my eBay dashboard, it can be on Sonar, it can be on Jenkins dashboard. In that case, functional code coverage plugin can help. What it does uh, for a given VM, it installs the JCoco agent. Uh, it controls the uh, life cycle of VM. It can control start, stop application servers. It can publish the coverage reports. It can copy the coverage reports from the VM to CI machine or anywhere else. It can manipulate and publish, get the report combined with the source code, which can be published to any kind of dashboard. This we are going to open source very soon. Configurations, uh, there are, uh, Jenkins is highly configurable. There are certain configurations which I would like to quickly go through. Security, uh, we use uh, project-based security, metrics-based security, role-based security, based on the needs. Another aspect of security is that, uh, okay, one aspect is unauthorized users should not be able to 
access the Jenkins. Secondly, your information, it should be secure. You should not have data loss. Your job history, your reports, it should be backed up and restored as and when required. So we use Jenkins feature to back up and restore periodically. Mm. When for any project or any CI job configuration becomes too complex, uh, it is very difficult for all the users to understand that. Uh, what we can do, and there are several cases where we have different jobs which need similar configurations. Can we bring efficiency over here? We created one more Jenkins plugin, which we are going to open source soon. It is easy config plugin, template-based solution. Jenkins already proposed and uh, has provided one template project plugin, but it has its own limitation. It cannot support the project actions. Our configuration, easy config solution, provides a template where user can specify what features you want. OK, you want Git, you want uh, Firebug, you want code coverage reports, and it will create a complex configuration for you. Now, it helps in two ways. They are loosely coupled. A lazy person like me just wants to always refer easy config. Techy person like Lex, he wants to see the complete configuration and better control. No, it's the other way around. <laughs> so in both the cases, it gives a bad advantage of both the worlds. And this is one of the tools which we are going to open source very soon. Uh, these are some of the Jenkins plugins which we use and we fell. These are not complete list, but some of the plugins which we use. And which motivated us to create some open source plugins, plugins which we are going to publish soon. Uh, and uh, with that, we like to thank uh, this Jenkins community, which has given us a very good platform to use, contribute, and take benefits for the entire software development lifecycle. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.